We're out at the beautiful cradle of humankind, which is pretty fitting for a story on energy evolution. Freedom One are making major waves with their electronic car conversions and home batteries. Let's plug into the current future. Hello. Good morning. I'm Anthony. Welcome to Freedom One. So good to meet you. Thank you very much for having us. So your vehicle is really amplified and graphic in terms of explaining the conversions and all the amazing electrical things you've done to it. Tell us more. Absolutely. This is our prototype that we got going in 2011. We started designing it in 2009. And um, we were so excited, uh, obviously, to get our, our Grand Cherokee on the road. Starting at the most important part of the car, is where you plug it in, obviously. Of um, course, yes. So we've got it plugged into our house at the moment, it's charging. How long does it take to charge? It takes about five hours maximum, but typically we don't use the whole battery every time. So, you know, two or three hours is normally enough to top it up all the way. Yeah. And how many kilometers do you get on a fully charged tank? Yeah, well, good question. This, this car can do 180 kilometers on one charge. Right. Yeah, not so, bad so at all. for a big 4x4, four four, that's pretty good going. I mean, we do also have uh, smaller cars that do more than 200 kilometers. If you look underneath here, we've got 110 lithium wow. ion cells. Each one is 3.2 volts nominal and uh, they're 60 ampere hours. And in the front, I'll show you now, we've got another 70. That makes 180 of these cells in total. So that means that our nominal operating voltage is at 580 volts DC, which is very advanced in the electric vehicle industry. And then in the back here, we have our chargers. So we've, we've got a total of five kilowatts of onboard charging. And, uh, and you can obtain five kilowatts from a 32 amp plug. Um, and uh, just under three kilowatts from a, a normal 16 amp plug. Um, so we find that that's more than enough charging capacity to carry around with you. This vehicle has really become incredible low maintenance. How does it differ from normal vehicle to now? Well, um, essentially an electric vehicle, and uh, our electric vehicles don't have any maintenance requirements at all. Um, so besides obviously the usual like tires, and, uh, and checking brake fluid levels and, you know, things like that. There's nothing else to do. In terms of the longer term, um, you've got to change the, ba the batteries after 10 years. And after that time, they'll have about 80% of their capacity. So your range would have come down a bit. Hmm. No big deal. You can keep them going if you like. Um, but in 10 years' time, who knows? There's probably going to be a, a much better battery out there. Um, the electric motor is underneath there. It's actually situated where the gearbox used to be. In our bigger vehicles, we use a high torque motor that allows us to remove the gearbox. Right. So it, in a 4x4, it connects directly to the transfer case. And uh, in a rear wheel drive, it connects straight onto the rear prop shaft. And you just pull away um, from standstill up to top speed. With this one's top speed is limited to 135 kilometers per hour electronically. Um, going faster than that isn't good for the batteries because you start to absorb huge amounts of power at those kinds of speeds with a, with a vehicle like this. So from naught to stand, naught or let's say standstill up to 135 kilometers per hour without any gear changes, without any fuss at all, it's just a smooth pull away all the way through. After the break, we discover more about what exactly makes this baby purr. Don't go away. You've converted a small car, a really big car like this one. What are some of the differences and some of the challenges? Yeah, well, the small cars, it's a, very, it's a good question because the small cars um, present a much greater challenge when it comes to finding a place to put all the batteries. Um, you, you don't have so, so many open spaces where you, where you removed a big engine like, a, like this car had, for instance. And also, it's a slightly different configuration. We, on the small cars, they, they're front-wheel drive, so we, we use the, the original gearbox and differential, and we connect the electric motor to that. And it works very well, because you can select the ratio that suits you best. Um, so, for instance, the, the, the Fiat 500 had, had a low and a high range. So, low range was 
if you felt like dicing someone at the robot, <laughs> or high range was for normal driving, so up to up to maximum speed of 160 kilometers per hour. Now that little car, which is one of your very cool conversion projects, you actually drove all the way down to Cape Town. We did. I mean, it was April uh, Easter long weekend and the client lived in Cape Town, so instead of putting it on a train, which is what the original idea was to do, we thought, well, let's make a holiday of it. And we spent four days meeting people uh, all the way down there and, uh, and, and drinking tea while our car charged over lunchtime. And, and then we, we stayed in uh, guest houses uh, and charged every night. And it was just three nights and four days of, of huge fun. We had a lot of uh, I had a good time and, and it proved the vehicle very well. There was not a single glitch all the way down, obviously. And, um, and we, we arrived um, to a very happy client. Ah, there's Lizette. Donine, this is Lizette. Hi! <laughs> my, my fellow conspirator, fellow co-founder of Freedom One. Now, throughout our day and all the tasks that we have to do, there's various scenarios that pop up, one of them these days being the obvious load shedding scenario. What happens then? What happens in terms of our battery yes. solution? Right. Well, what happens then is you have one of these sexy freedom lights in your home. And because of the way we have set it up with our inverter and what happens inside this uh, battery box, um, nothing happens. You don't even know load shedding is happening because it automatically switches between what power it has been programmed to draw from. Now, this is all great, but when it comes to installation, does it come out of a box onto your wall? Do I need an extra army? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, no. Yes. You don't need a big army at all. You need one clever army, maybe, to install it for you, to get it going. But that also is um, done by a qualified um, technician, so it's, um, you don't have to worry too much about that. And Anthony will explain then just the process. Yeah, so, to put it together. so we've designed it up front to be very simple to install and, and all the special electronics are built into the unit. So essentially all you have on the side is a positive and negative terminal and one control plug and, uh, and that goes to your inverter. Um, but then the, the bigger effort involved in an installation like this is then connecting the inverter power into your distribution board in your house. Um, so you have to separate all the circuits that are going to run off battery power from the ones that actually just run straight off of grid power. And, and sometimes you need to install a second distribution board um, so that you can wire the, the power that comes from the inverter into a separate place. And that's where most of the installation time comes from. In terms of Freedom One, it's literally put it on the wall, three connections into the inverter and it's done. Literally as easy as one, two, three. <laughs>